And something happened backstage in WCW uh, at a time when you were probably at your one of your peaks in popularity in America uh, with Paul Orndorff. That we've oh heard, my God! We've heard a lot of uh, his side of the story. Yeah, you know, stop right there. You know what? Paul has made a living talking about this night, and he one of the one of the things he says. And, and you know what? I, I understand Paul's sick. I, I guess he's got throat cancer. Is that right? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's hard to say this, but, you know, I was there that night, and Paul, Paul had a crippled right hand. His, his right hand was the same size as my wrist all the way up, all the way up to his shoulder. And that's the hand he, he hit me with. So, I, real quick, I, I, I got to tell the story because I've heard Paul, you know, it's like it's, he won't let it die. It's like 50, 20 years ago he was saying this, and then... Today he's still saying it. He's still doing interviews about it. And, and one of the things he said was, you know, I got five extra years of my contract. He kind of smiled. And, and it, it, uh, it, 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 I need to speak out because I never have, really. Well, this is the honest of God's truth, so help me God. This, Eric Bischoff called me at 8 in the morning at the Marriott and said, Leon, you have promised me pictures for a photo shoot for weeks. You got to do them today or you're fired. And he says, I'm not kidding. So, hey, you get up and you go. Four hour photo shoot, and grueling, it's exhausting. And, uh, you know, where you had to go in your street clothes and then, um, you know, put your hot stuff on, get, get all pumped up, put your uniform on, and then start posing, right? And then, well, that photo doesn't look good, let's do it again, that photo doesn't look good, you know. So it just became grueling. And I had told Eric, please, call over and tell someone that I'm going to be late because I'm doing this. And of course he didn't do it. I just did a photo shoot. I had my bag and I went into the room and sat down. I, whew, I just did that traffic that, you know, from the Atlanta Towers over to the CNN Center. Yeah. And, and so what you're going to sit down, right? <laughs> so I sat down he came in and said, you're fucking late, why are you late? And I, you know, I was trying to explain to him, I said, Paul, like, politely, Paul, I mean, didn't someone tell you? I'm fucking doing this photo shoot. And uh, didn't Eric tell you? And he said, no, and told me a fucking thing. I said, well, that doesn't give you a reason to fucking mistreat me. So then I said, you know, if that's not good enough for you, you can go fuck yourself because I've had it. I mean, this is, you know, I'm not getting cussed out by you. You're not my boss. And he thought he was. And you know what? I had been told specifically that during that period of time, Dusty Rhodes was my boss, period. And Eric Bischoff, those two. Other than that, no one is above you. Those two guys. Yeah. And I think Sting had the same arrangement. Hogan had, well, maybe even a different arrangement. Maybe, maybe Eric Bischoff couldn't tell him what to do. But, um, so, but that's neither here nor there. So he he turned around, and walked out, and Terry Tater comes in and gets me. Leon, regardless of where you were or what you know, uh, we got to do some interviews. So. I got it, got my mask, took my shirt off, got my rubber hose so I could pump up, and I'm running to do the interviews. And Paul steps in and blocks me from going to the interviews. And uh, he called me everything in a book and threatened me to my face, face to face. So I slapped him. I thought that was a threat, a threat to my well-being and my safety. You know, hey, you're going to tell me you're going to beat the hell out of me? Well, you know, I'm going to defend myself. So I slapped him. His feet came off the ground and he, he hit the... The, the, his back hit the the cement, and his head just met, missed this the steel steel toolbox where we do we put the tools to put the ring together. Right. And I thought, my God, if his head hit that, I uh, you know I'm done. I mean, no matter why I'm late. I mean, if his head hits that and he's hurt, I'm fired and probably go to jail. And so I, I went over and put my hand on his chest. Paul, are you okay? And he looked like he was coming too, because he hit the ground hard. I slapped the shit out of him. So Paul's got a right arm about the size of this wrist, all the way up, and uh, he's 200, 200 pounds. I mean, he's really in bad shape, you know, physically. He's not the Paul Underf that you would, you know, that 260, 270 pound guy. He's like 200 pounds, 215, and. Uh, so when he gets up, he gets up, and I'm thinking, you know what? If if I fight him back and and, and do what I, I think I should do to defend myself, I'm gonna get fired at the very least, and maybe I'm gonna hurt him because he's just. 
So he, he, I thought I had slapped him initially, so I wanted to get that back. So I let him hit me in the face. And it was nothing. It was that, that, that weak right hand. And he hit me a second time. He hit me a third time. I drug him down with me. And Paul, some, some of the, the wrestlers helped Paul up. And he kicked me once or twice before I got up. I remember that, and I got up and grabbed him, and we went into the coach's room, fighting like a wrestling type fight. But that was it. He had boots on. And like, you know, I don't know why that matters, but I guess if you're barefoot and slippers on, it's harder to fight somebody, right? But it was, I'm late, so what's he doing with slippers on? He's an agent, he's got his boots on. I mean, I, I you know, and then the next day how Paul had beat me up, and, and what they're seeing is those three hits to the face. And I mean, it was like, it was like my, my 12 year old son hitting me in the face. But my role was to be the, the bad guy beat everyone up. Yeah. So everyone that I wrestled, uh, I was budding, right? Yeah. So it's like, like Regal, I remember Steve Regal. I mean, I kicked the shit out of Steve because it was my job too, you know? And he was very vocal about all that, you know? He said, yeah, you're not so tough now. And I said, Steve, fuck. So I just shut up and walked away. Is it true that uh, Ming was involved in breaking that up? Yeah. In other words, when I took him into the coach's room, uh, Ming came up behind me and said, Leon, that's enough. You're going to hurt him. And you know, <laughs> at that point, I didn't want to mess with Ming because that would have been a mistake, I think. He's one of the people that... Uh, you know what? He, not only was he fresh, I just kept on fighting, but... No, you don't want to mess with me. Did you ever get the chance to see him in action in a bar? I never did, but I'd heard about him. That sometimes is the, the worst, worst, uh, you know, not seeing. You know, because you see, you say, well, you know, that, it ain't so good, or, or it is really good. But sometimes you can't see, you know. But that whole thing with Paul, and it, it's like, how many times have you heard that interview lately? He's still telling the same story. He's still getting over on this thing. It's like his thing, his, you know, his claim to fame. So he's hanging on to that bullshit story. And that's exactly what it is. It's bullshit. And ultimately, you got released over that. And No, no, no. No? Nope. No, no. Ultimately, Eric Bischoff, and this was probably the second mistake I made. Because getting into, you know, slapping Orndorff felt good, but it was wrong. I mean, no way should I punch first. Right, he got in my face. I said, "Go!" I should have told him to go and take his best shot. And once he did, then I could have, you know, done anything I want with impunity. But so that was the first mistake. The second mistake was an Eric. You know, he did send me home, and he, you know, I had heard that I was going over Hogan on the on the first Nitro, which was coming up, and I was in suspension. So they were going to bring me out of suspension, you know, like this big thing. To have a surprise. Yeah, surprise, and... Because uh, at that point, they hadn't made the deal with Luger, Luger they were looking yeah. for something big. And I was going around Hogan, yeah, they were looking for something big. And, you know, I had heard that, much to my surprise, Eric was in my corner saying, hey, Leon, you know, it's a hard worker, and he's, you know, he took that WCW belt for a year, and never once, you know, had a bad match. And, and you were on the opening, actually, for the first Nitro, even though you never wrestled on Nitro, so yeah. you really add some... So I heard that, and then... So Eric says, well, during this, this period of time off, you're, we want you to take a, a, a six-month pay cut, and that's a lot of money. I said, Eric, for, for this? I mean, I said, I can't see six-month pay cut. I mean, that's, that's a half your salary. You know, that's, what, close to $400,000 fine. That's shit, man. I mean... About 150, 200. I mean, something's you know, and he wouldn't come off that. And so I told Eric that uh, if that was his decision, that I, I was going to go elsewhere. And that. And I just wanted to bring up. You did mention your salary close to 400,000. I don't know if if you want to talk about it, we can cut this out. That, that was half of it. Yeah, I'm only yeah that was half of it. I'm only going to bring this up because there was a recent podcast with Bruce Pritchard, and it was brought up on that podcast that. You were making about around that 750 range, and Bruce Pritchard shot it down and said, "No, there's no way Vader would have been making that much." How to excuse me? How to end the bleep? Would Bruce Pritchard, WWE official, know what I was making in WCW? Because the only two people that really know what I made was was Eric, and I guess the the 
excuse me, the WCW officials, are, the suits, and my agent and me. So and without saying the everything number... Everything else was just, you know, Ric Flair, well, come on, Eric, tell me. So Eric shoots out a number to make Rick happy, and, and Eric's not going to, you know, Eric was under contract. I mean, he had, he had signed my contract. And it said, you know, confidentiality. We had a confidentiality clause. I didn't want no one to know. So, I mean, Flair, I mean, I'm not trying to bad my Flair, but someone, you know, like, hey, heard something and said something, so. So, basically, due to that pay cut reason, that's when you started talking to WWE? Uh, well, the fine. Oh, the I, fine, I didn't want to take the fine. Yeah. You know, they said, you know, you, you take the six-month suspension and this fine. And uh, you can come back. And you know what? And I said, come back with my full contract. In other words, he said, yeah, I'll do that for you. And then, in other words, the six months were, wasn't, weren't, wasn't going to be deducted, which was very fair on Eric's part. And see, that didn't stick in my mind that I'd come back even after, just after six months. Uh, you know, things would have been, I could have been in great shape, lost some weight, got tan, you know, then came back and made a real run out of it. So what made you make the big jump finally? Uh, well, I got a settlement, you know, uh, so we settled out on my contract, which was substantial because it was like, I don't know, six, six years left, but, you know, if you multiply those six years of what it would have made, you know, so it was a bad mistake on my part, but, uh, what, I don't know, I think pride and, you know, pride and business don't work, so that was a big, big mistake.